It's just so nice coming and meeting everybody and making connections with people and actually having a sit down conversation with them, you know, getting contact information and just kind of being seeped in the environment of a bunch of really intelligent, really driven developers. I mean, it's awesome. Okay, uh, so a few years ago, I implemented coatings using C17. Um, you're about to see some truly horrible code, I apologize for it. So the implementation is around 200 lines, and I also wrote a test case. Uh, it, 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 you will see it in the slide, uh, and apparently, it still runs. So, uh, in a coroutine, we first need to check if we need to resume somewhere, and then we resume. And inside the body, we can yield to pause the coroutine anywhere we want. Here are three ways that you can implement resume. But none of them work with MSVC X64, which was my development at the time. So, I wrote an assembly procedure that um, smashes the return address. And I use it to implement resume, but the problem is that after resume, the, the compiler might assume that the, some variables might be in registers. So I wrote an em empty assembly procedure just to force the compiler to reload the, uh, the variables to registers. And I call it every time after an yield. Uh, to get the return address of where we stopped, I, I created a function that called the built-in uh, return address, and I forced it to be no inline. And now we have uh, um, a pause and resume, and we can refactor them into macros. Uh, we can't declare variables inside the coroutines regularly because they will be destroyed when we exit through the yield. So we need a coroutine frame which contains the address of where we paused and the line storage of all the local variables. Um, wherever, whenever I uh, declare a variable, I also um, uh, uh, declare a uh, define a struct that contains the, the local variable and inherits from the previous frame. Um, yeah, so a counter is a struct that recursively inherits from itself, and we can get the current type of our frame by calling get frame with a really high counter. And so wh whenever I, uh, I define a new uh, struct type, I also declare a function get frame that takes the, the next uh, counter and returns the, the frame type. And we can also refactor it into macros. Then I used a, um, a template parameter to extract the alignment and size requirements of all the, um, of all the frame types uh, to compute the, the storage uh, that I need to store all the local variables. Um, the each frame also contains two functions for cleanup. One uh, that will be called that cleans the local variable and uh, propagate the call to the parent frame. Uh, and there are also two st uh, structs that uh, stop the propagation so that it wouldn't uh, destroy variables in outer scopes. So if we, now we need to add the scope propagation uh, calls to whenever we start a scope or exit a scope. And I did it with macros. Uh, finally, here is an example that, uh, of a coroutine that launches a thread um, which uh, compute some answer, and the coroutine will yield until it gets the answer. Apparently, I was having fun when I wrote this horrible code. Thank you very much.